Hello, everybody. Dave Webster, Identity Crisis Design. Welcome back to another custom paint special, Airbrush. We're going to do a gun breakdown on this Peak C5 from Bare Air. This is a standard 0 0.03 millimeter tip, gravity fed airbrush. No cutaway handle, no preset handle, like you might see here. So, Barrier.com, this is their signature brand, the Peak C5. It's very comparable to uh, Iowata Eclipse, a little bit better price point. Iowata products, they also sell at Barrier.com and some Createx products. So, get started. This here is the male end of a quick disconnect for your air hose. This does not come with the brush unless it's part of a promotional package. Because airbrush bodies don't always have this, what I would consider standard, or at least this is the most common thread pitch. When you're dealing with a badger or a pache, it'll be a little bit different fitting. So when you go and find these, it works like this. So when you go and find these, you get this and you get this together and it fits your, your specific airbrush. Back in the day uh, when I was doing uh, t-shirts 24-7, I had six airbrushes with six with a hose connected to each one of them. And uh, when these things first came out, they came out, they were made out of brass and some other like softer metals, total pieces of crap. But uh, these days, I believe Iowata makes these. Um, it's a very quality product. It's very rare that you find them, you know, leaking unless you're constantly plugging and unplugging and, you know, doing your best to ruin them. That aside, let's get started taking this thing apart. Now the handle, it's a basic handle, its main function is to keep your hand from interrupting the action of the brush here. And you can see, when you pull the trigger back, it's possible, if you're not paying attention, that you pull the trigger back and, you know, maybe you're having that one of those stressed out days, you let go of the trigger and your hand is still holding on to the needle. And now you've just sprayed paint where you don't want it to. I spray with a handle on. A lot of people spray without the handle on, they're comfortable with it and that's fine, but that's basically what the handle is for. The cutaway handle is so that you can pull the needle back here with the chuck. And then this preset handle is, this preset um, uh, dial is so that you can get specific on how much paint comes out. Not a lot of paint, a little bit more paint, you turn the dial some more and you get even more. Okay, it's a very nice setup. This is a Creos PS770. You can find those at spraygunner.com. That's a nice little site. They've got a lot of like abrasives and tapes and other spray guns. You know, like spray guns. They've got some of those uh, handheld compressors that fit. They about the size of a beer, you know, it's sit on the on the bottom there. I have not tried those out yet, but I'm looking forward to it. But anyways, this is a more basic brush, so let's get it apart. Needle cap, paint cup lid, or just the paint cap. And this is the needle chuck. You loosen it to get the needle out. We're just going to take it off. Take out the needle. We're going to, this is the needle chuck spring guide. And this is basically where the spring sits inside. And then you can see that opening there so that the, the needle chuck can actually fit through it. Now something about this setup here that's a little bit different than others is that this plus the, what I call it the wing rocker or the, just the rocker piece that sits right in front of it is not a, a single assembly. I'll show you what I mean in a second. And take out this trigger or lever and you'll notice these two prongs up to either side. Sometimes, and I believe the uh, Vega 2000 has this uh, setup where this is one solid stem. These prongs aren't here, and there's a divot in the bottom, and that's the thing that kind of teeter-totters on the top of the air valve stem. And I'll show you that in a second. Just be patient while this... There we go. That's the rocker piece I'm talking about. Very often, you'll see these two in one assembly like this. Now this is on the Creos. Basically what they do is they kind of 
you put this little rocker piece on there, and then they punch this end so that these two sides flare out, creating little finger holds so that this can float freely, but then not actually come off of here. This is very convenient. I do like this setup very much. Uh, Pache VLs, I've seen there's a little tiny pin that goes through there. And, um, you know, it seems like this is actually a much smarter setup as far as assembly goes, or production rather, actually. So I'll just put that back in there. I just wanted you guys to see the difference between the, uh, which this is actually a more standard way of putting an airbrush together, at least that portion of it, than, than this is. They're both just as effective, um, but that's just how I see things. Nozzle cap or air cap, nozzle, sometimes called the tip. And then this little wrench comes with the brush when you have a setup like this. The Pash AVL, the uh, Thayer and Chandler 2000 has a nozzle that's about three times the size of this. It is unthreaded. It basically just looks like a, a, a cone or a diamond, a round diamond shaped with the one end kind of cut short and it sits right in between the body and the nozzle cap. It just kind of sits in between. There's no screwing or anything like that. Now, you might want to take this apart if you're having a very difficult clog and you need to take the needle and kind of get it in there and you know, kind of scrape things out. And, um, you know, it, it, you've got a real stubborn clog very rarely, but, you know, sometimes that's the case. And for the most part, that's it except for a couple of things. Inside here is what's called needle packing. It's a Teflon O-ring, solvent resistant or solvent proof, and then a needle packing nut. So the nut screws back and forth and it squeezes that needle packing to prevent paint from getting back into the body of the airbrush, which is the main reason why you would be taking something apart this far. Now this screwdriver here, I made for myself, but a precision flathead screwdriver of a given size will do the same thing. So we're going to get it in there and kind of feel around for that non right in, so that the screwdriver is fit into that, into that needle packing screw. If it's loose, if you've got this much play, and you've got a lot of paint in the body of your airbrush, you've got this much play, more than likely that's the reason why. Something is leaking from here into here, and that's no good. So you're gonna go clockwise until it stops, okay? And then just give it a little extra squeeze. Really that much, that's, that's all it needs. Otherwise, the needle will get stuck in the airbrush and it won't move back and forth. And now uh, you, you're, you're going to have to take the whole thing apart and adjust it again. But this, this is a, when everything's lined up right, this is a nice, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think maybe that's just a, like a little too tight. Find that screw again and just kind of back it off a little bit. Put the needle in real careful. You don't want to keep smacking the needle up against the inside. You want to kind of feel it or feel around like a like a like a blind man with a tapping stick. And then that, that actually that's that's got nice movement. I can feel that there's a seal that's being created, but it but it's not interrupting the movement of the of the needle. So that's really good right there. Now let's get into the depths of what happens if you're getting bad airflow. Now, not every airbrush body is gonna have two components where you've got the air valve assembly and the body in two different parts. Sometimes this is all one, this is all one uh, forging or all, all one piece. So I'm just really backing it off a little bit with the uh, pliers and then unscrewing it by hand. Now you can see this O-ring here, if you've got a leak and you can't stop it, no matter how hard you crank down, this O-ring may be damaged doesn't happen all the time. And then this, this is the little guy, this is the little valve that when you press down on it, that's what lets air actually go into the airbrush. Okay. 
put that aside real quick because there's a piece in here that's the the piston that's the air valve piston there he goes the trigger lays down on this which then presses into this which gives you your your air that o-ring don't ever try to take that out if it's if you've got an issue with an o-ring right here okay then fine order another one and try to finagle one in there but almost never do you need to worry about this uh, if you have an issue stopping airflow then this here might be a problem and i'll address that when we're putting it back together now <clears throat> this is not what this tool looks like when you get it i had to make this I did this video a couple of times using a paper clip, and I can show you exactly what this was for. It's for getting this, this air valve guide nut out. You can see the hole on either side. You get that paper clip bent just right. You can put it in there, and you can unscrew it, and you can get that out. Or you can you know, use one of these tools. I don't even know why I've got this in my toolbox, but desperation is the mother of necessity, is the mother of invention, which is why I made this. Some files, some grinding wheels, and you can see that very specific kind of wine glass shape in the negative space there. There's a reason for that, and I'll explain. Those two holes, you fit that in there, and you spin, spin until you feel that guide nut release. And thank God you had the tool there so that the guide nut did not go across the room. Notice threads on both sides. Okay. There's the spring. And there's the valve, basically the valve stem. And then the body. Why do you need to take this apart? Uh, you don't hardly ever need to. But if you're having a problem getting air into your airbrush and you've exhausted all other manner of what it could possibly be, possible you've got something stuck in here or in here. Now, see where this paper clip is going? You should be able to see it right there, the tip of that paper clip. Same with the other hole. Okay, they're kind of they're 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 kind of drilled out to a this direction. If there's something stuck in there, then yeah, okay, fine, get it out. And almost never is that going to happen. But that is a reason why you want to have a decent filtering system on your compressor because if you start getting big pieces of gunk dirt or um, other foreign material that can over over time dry and set up and just clog this up that's the reason why you're going to need to take this apart and i said i was going to so there i kept my promise now let's get all this junk back together one of the things that i like to use to keep these parts moving freely this is a jar of Vaseline I've had in my kit forever, you can tell, because it doesn't even say Vaseline anymore. Just a little bit right there, okay, on the air valve. And the reason I'm using Vaseline is because it is a solvent-based product. Urethane paint is a solvent-based product. So the two actually work well together, and this won't affect any of your uh, water-based acrylic paint either. One of the things that you do not, do not want to put in your airbrush, especially if you're working with urethanes and automotive paint, is anything silicone based. Stay away from WD-40. Do not spray that stuff on your airbrush. Silicone will make all your solvent based products fish eye. And I mean immediately. 
Um, I've pulled pinstripes on one, like in halfway through pulling a pinstripe at a detail shop and somebody sprays wheel cleaner three bays away, just because it's in the air, made my stripes fisheye. Kept me there for an extra 30 minutes trying to fix it. Do not use silicone-based stuff in your airbrush ever, ever, ever. Stay away from WD-40. Okay. That O-ring goes in first through the bottom just like that don't put it in backwards okay it's gonna you know cause a whole bunch of heartache once you realize that you put it in backwards spring right over that pin just like that just like that um look <clears throat> Disclaimer, I've got my autofocus turned off and I've got the focus dialed in just so hopefully yeah, that I can, you know, pull this stuff in between the table and the camera and you guys can actually see what's going on. So um, that's uh, that's my dedication to quality here and hopefully I can, you know, you know, keep it together. Now, here we go. Just to reiterate how much of a pain in the ass it is to put this air valve assembly together Okay, the kid had to make this at work while nothing was happening. It was a slow day. Thank God it was a slow day. You all benefited from my slow day at work. And I did it to all three of these wrenches. Every time you get one of these airbrushes, you get one of these wrenches. I got three of them. So I've got the air valve guide nut in there. You have to put it over the spring. That pin has to go through through the nut. See that pin? And then hopefully, if you're lucky enough, it will not cross thread. You really have to I'm like seriously, like it's like you have to I'll undo it again and, and redo it. You have to shove it this far down in in order to get those threads to catch and hopefully they catch you know if it doesn't feel like it's going in smoothly back it off back it off until you until you feel the threads catching the right way don't even spin this don't even spin the tool just spin the air valve body and once it stops you're good this is not a crank it down type of thing you'll notice the valve the guide nut once this is chrome has, has has worn off, okay, you'll note the color of the metal. This is this is brass, okay. This is uh, like a, the same stuff that you make a musical instrument out of. It's soft, soft metal. You do not crank down on these parts. You snug them up, and that's fine. But most most of the time, it's hand tight, and then a little snuggy snug. This O-ring here is going to keep it from uh, is going to keep your air from leaking out. Okay, I've got it hand tight. I use my Robo grips. I've had these forever. I I love these. These are awesome. I love these Robo grips. I got these back when Ball V lock was a thing. Just give it a little snug. That's it. Okay, that's the bottom. All right, we put the top together. We're going to start with this. I'm going to show you a little trick. And it starts with the needle. Okay, just like a kind of like a blind man lightly tapping around until you until you find the hole in the back and that needle comes out just like that. Okay? Take your your uh, your nozzle, set it over the top, and then gravity being your friend, you just kind of like set it in there, right? Give it a little spin. Oh, knock my handle over. Give it a little spin, and it's in there, right? Get it hand tight, and then. With your wrench, wind it around until you feel it stop. Okay, you feel it, feel it stop. 
I'm gonna get that on there. Feel it stop, just like this. And then a little tiny, just give it a little tiny snuggy snug. Now the reason you're doing that is because you can't, this can't be loose. You have to create a seal because of air pressure differences inside the gun and outside the gun. I'm gonna talk about that principle once this whole thing gets back together. Same for this. Your air uh, nozzle cap goes on, hand tight. You don't need to wrench this on, you don't need to pliers this on. Take the needle out, because you need to put parts in before the needle can go in and hold everything together. Needle does a lot of work. We got all this together, and now we gotta move on to the inner workings here. So we gotta put this piston in, okay? Now that O-ring that I was telling you about before that you really don't need to mess with at all unless it's damaged, in which it usually never is. But if you have a situation where you push your trigger down and then you pick it up and you still have air or it's a delayed reaction, when you pick your trigger up, the air should stop. If it doesn't do that, if it takes its time or if it stays, if, if you, you, you pull your trigger, your finger off your trigger and it stays put and you're still getting air out of the airbrush, this probably needs some kind of lubrication. I know like on a Pash AVL, this is actually connected to the trigger and it just kind of swings back and forth. On a Vega 2000, you don't have these prongs. You have a divot in the middle of this stem that just sits on top of, it just sits on top of that, that, that air valve pin that you saw going through here before. In this case, this is your little in-between guy, okay? Put a little Vaseline or whatever lube you like, as long as it's not WD-40 or some other silicone-based lubricant, okay? I'm gonna dump that in there and hope for the best. Oh, look at that, two points. Anytime you see me using the needle to do anything to this airbrush, realize I'm always using the back of the needle, never the part that we all know and love and need. Right here, push that, push that guy down. Trigger or lever, I like trigger better. See that cutout? It conforms to the airbrush body, that goes towards the back. That's so that it gives you a little, a little bit of extra movement whenever you're pulling the trigger back and fits. You know, you basically you put it in, turn it, and let it sit in that cradle. You see how that fits real nice right there? <clears throat> now, this I could probably put in with my fingers if I wanted to show off, but I just want to give you guys a real quick do and don't on this. You see the curve going towards the back? This is the right way to put this in. And on any other assembly, and I'll show you the one, oh, the, like you saw on the Creos, this is how it's attached to the needle chucking guide. That's backwards. Don't do that. Do this. If you got some tweezers, that's great. Needle nose pliers, you can set it in there, give her a twist, and let it sit. Or you can dump it in with your fingers and then kind of, you know, chop stick it around and try to figure out how to get it in there the right way, spin it, whatever, dump it out, try it again, all that. So that's in there correctly. Next thing is this. Now, I will sometimes I'll dip this into the, the Vaseline, but I know that this is lubed up because I've tried to do this video five times already and I don't want to give up the works. That screw that we were talking about before that you see right there, that's going to keep this from, from spinning. On that other assembly, where this is all one piece, that rocker and this, because it's one piece is the thing that keeps it from spinning around. You'll notice on the bottom of this Krios, there's no screw. And on the bottom of this, there is, because those are two separate pieces. 
at any rate. Spring, spring guide. I screw this in all the way. It is something that you can adjust, but I mean, you know, seriously, the tension on this thing is so light, you you know, but there's no there's no point. Just screw it all the way in. Needle. Okay. Now when you put this in, you don't shove it in. Okay, like like it said something about your mom. You don't just throw that in there. Because if you if you do it too hard, you're going to split the nozzle, and that is something that you cannot fix. Okay, bad needle you can fix. Well, that's another video. This uh, split nozzle you can't. So I want to make sure you guys can see that. Okay, now before I go any further, I want to explain something about the way the air cap, sorry, the nozzle cap fits over the nozzle. You should be able to see it poking out just a little bit, just a hair beyond the cap. In fact, I can take this, you can, I can feel that nozzle there. Just to give you guys an, an idea of, of how, of how it's basically, it's, it is literally just at the edge of it. If your nozzle is not beyond the, the edge of this, is not is if it doesn't crest above this the 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 hole that's in that little nozzle cap, it's going to give you issues because of the high pressure system outside the gun versus the low pressure system inside the gun, which is what drives the paint out. It's the the physics of how the the gun works. So these parts have to fit together pretty pretty tight. Put the needle in, and you should feel metal on metal. If you feel something chunky, crunchy, squishy, whatever, there's still something stuck inside. There's still something stuck inside your, your nozzle. So you put that in there, and just to keep the needle in place, you're not cranking down on this, okay? Just, just to keep the needle in place, screw that chuck on there. Put the handle on. Quick disconnect, needle cap, lid, Bob's your uncle, okay? So, <clears throat> if you're having issues with the way that your gun is spraying, even after all this, the reasons are going to be, one, that your nozzle is not down tight enough. And again, you don't crank it down, but I had I had talked to a fellow artist who couldn't figure out why he was getting this sputtering spitting because he had hand tightened this. He did not snuggy snug it with the little wrench. So air, high pressure, was getting in to the gun and interrupting the flow. Okay, this is a, basically an airbrush is a tool that controls air pressure to get paint to spray out. For instance, when you're drinking a drink through a straw, you're creating a low pressure system inside your head and the high pressure system outside the glass is pushing, is, is pushing the drink up through the straw. Same thing here. When the air is traveling through here, it's creating a low pressure system and the outside high pressure system is pushing on the paint and driving it out through the brush. That's why there's a little hole in this cap, and there's a little hole in every airbrush jar. If this gets clogged, it'll start skipping because your high pressure air outside the airbrush is going to try to fight its way in through the front. Same thing with this air cap. If this air cap is, and it only really needs to be finger tight, some of them will have an O-ring just to make sure, you know, that it's got a good seal. Okay, but then uh, that messes with the distance from the nozzle, and it's it's a whole other that is an accuracy thing. If you got a, if this is not tight enough, air is going to try to get in here, fight its way back into the airbrush, and now you're skipping again. Or you'll pull back on the trigger, and you'll feel their bubbles will show up here. Okay, this nozzle, I'm going to try to zero in on this right here. That edge of that nozzle has to crest 
through the hole of this cap, that little hole right there, right there. It has to crest through the hole of that cap. It has to go beyond it just a little bit so that it pulls the paint through the gun. Nozzle has to be tight, not so that you strip the threads. It has to be tight to create a seal. Create a seal here, create a seal here so that the paint has nowhere else to go but out. Cap, lid. There's a brand new airbrush. If you like this content, please like, subscribe, and share. There's more to come. I'm going to show you how to fix a busted needle. And I uh, hope to see you guys soon. I'm going to get that out as fast as possible. You keep slinging that paint. Talk to you later.